Yes, it is well with our souls. We are here this morning and this is our time to come together and worship our Lord. Welcome to Concord United Methodist Church and join us in worship. Please join us in the responsive reading. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God and King. Glorious and powerful is the God of all creation. In reverent awe we gather to worship our God. The Lord our God is King and the just judge of all things for all eternity, all people and all places. In reverent awe we gather to praise our God. The Lord our God is King and the forgiving God, fairness and justice are the names of our God. In reverent awe we gather to worship God within the light of God's holiness, justice, mercy, and love. In the name of Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. We will now sing Rejoice, the Lord is King. and ministry where we reach out and tell you about what we're doing um, still in our church. 
Winter Nights is an incredible program that Concord United Methodist Church has partnered with other churches in our community for many, many years where we open up our church campus to house the unsheltered uh, siblings among us and around us uh, so they will be warm and safe. And because of the pandemic, we were unable to do that. So we again partnered with our interfaith partners and with our mission committee, they came up with the idea to have a winter night's walk for success. And so the committee has a thank you letter that I will read to you now. Dear CUMC family and friends, the winter night shelter walk took place on Sunday, April 11th under clear blue skies. 35 walkers from CUMC and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church took the one or two mile walk around downtown Concord for the winter night's families. We would like to thank you, our CUMC family, for supporting the walk. Many of you gave up your Sunday afternoon to walk, and many of you gave your money to help this essential effort. We also thank Betty, Laura, and Sue from Good Shepherd for the paper vest that identified us to the community. We especially thank Jane Lincoln and Ruby Perez for standing watch, securing our area in the Todos Santos Park where we took the walk. We want to also thank Jared Paulson for voluntarily uh, stepping up in the last minute to walk for Bill DeGamo, who became ill and was unable to walk. Since pledges are still coming in, we do not have a total. I hear, I hear it's like 5,000 or more, so, but don't hold me to that. Uh, but they do not have a total yet. Be assured that we will let you know if you have not yet turned in your pledge, please do so as soon as possible. And please make your donation by check and mail it to the church or drop it off in the slot on the door at the church office. Again, sincerely thank you, one and all, your CUMC Missions Committee, Carolyn Paulson, Kathy Evans, Carol Curtis, Kathleen Gregory, Dolores Logue, Mary Beth Sear, and of course, our one and only Pastor Lee. So next in-person service, our outdoor Easter service was a blessing to all of us who attended and I'm sure to all of you that watched online. We wanted to hug each other, but we were good. We were good. We kept that six foot distancing, but the warmth that came up out of that friendship circle on that kind of chilly morning uh, was beautiful. So thank you one and all for attending the Easter service. And we're hoping to have another in-person service on Sunday, July 4th. Stay tuned for more information on that service. And we will also let you know when the sanctuary will be reopened again. Buy a shingle, support the church. If you're so moved, please donate money for the sanctuary roof. The contract price is $191,794. And even five or $10 donations to our roof loan account will add up over time. You can make it as a memorial gift and I'm sure they wouldn't even mind if you made it in honor of somebody. So please consider adding roof to the memo line and God bless you for your consideration. Small groups is a great way that um, we remain in fellowship and learn more about each other um, as, as a family. And so for more information, contact the person that's listed on the small groups that I will outline for you next. The Wednesday Bible study is every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And it's of course by that wonderful mode of Zoom. And the current book is Simon Peter, Flawed but Devoted Disciple. We read a chapter, view a video, and study it for two weeks. Each book lasts for about 12 weeks, and you can contact Steve Pierce at 925-518-4447. The Christ Care Men's Group is the first and third Fridays, again via Zoom. I mean, our church is using Zoom. <laughs> and it's from 1030 to noon. And the foundation of the men's group is getting to know each other, getting to know the Bible, mission, outreach, 
concerns and prayer, and health, diet, and exercise. Jim McGuire can be reached at 925-997-2257. Disciples Under Construction, we meet every Sunday at 3 o'clock. Um, it's held on Zoom. And if you would like to join us, and I hope that you will, uh, you can contact me at michelle at asap.org. Unshakable Hope is our small group for our 30s and 40s uh, age folks. I don't know, are those, I guess those are millennials and plus, uh, but they're now meeting on Facebook Live. And if you want to join, go to conqueredumc.org and click on Facebook. Send us your photos. I always forget, I'm taking photos all the time, but you know, we're doing stuff and we're starting to get a little bit more active. That's another way to stay connected. Send those photos to Sandy through her email and then we'll share them during the future services. Send us your prayer requests. We also know uh, Vince was saying before we began the service this morning, you know, we have a lot of prayers and we have heavy hearts, we have joys, we have a lot of things going on in our lives. If you have a prayer request that you would want read out loud in the online service, please send it to Pastor Lee before 9 a.m. each Saturday. And now we will have our children's moment. Good morning, boys and girls. Just two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter Sunday, the day Jesus rose from the dead. We call this the resurrection. All Jesus had said about himself came true, and his disciples realized that he was truly the risen Christ that they had expected. Jesus overcame death and then appeared to people all over Israel. As Christians, we know this to be real and true, but some people may have trouble believing in the resurrection. Today, we have TV shows and movies with incredible technology that can create special effects where superheroes can conquer the universe with superpowers and they can do whatever they want. And it may look realistic and believable, but we know it can't really happen. For example, a person can't be talking to you in Concord and then suddenly appear to a different friend in San Francisco. That would just be crazy, right? But Jesus, really did appear and disappear to different people in different places after he died. For example, last week, Miss Karen told us the story of Jesus appearing to Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus, which is a village just outside Jerusalem. The two disciples recognized Jesus when he broke the bread at dinner with them. Then the Bible says he disappeared from their sight. Isn't that amazing? Jesus could just appear and then disappear whenever he wanted. When I was a child, like you guys, there was a show on TV called Star Trek, where a spaceship, the Enterprise, would travel all around the universe exploring different planets. It was led by Captain Kirk, and the first officer was Mr. Spock. Now, when Captain Kirk and Spock wanted to visit another planet, all they had to do was stand on a certain spot in the spaceship and say, beam me up, Scotty, and in an instant, they would be magically transported to another planet or anywhere else they wanted to go. And as a child, that looked pretty real to me. But Jesus really did appear and disappear to different people in different places after he died. The Bible tells us that Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, one of his followers that was outside of Jesus's tomb. He also appeared to Peter, who had previously denied him. He appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, as we said. And he appeared to his disciples three different times, and then also to James, his half-brother. And in the Bible, Paul tells us that Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. Now, all these people knew Jesus. They knew who he was. They knew that he had died, and now they were seeing him again. Can you imagine their shock and all at this amazing revelation? This wasn't news they were going to keep to themselves. For the rest of their lives, they would tell others what they had witnessed and the story of Jesus. God created everything, and we are special to God, so special 
that God sent his only son, Jesus, to come down from heaven to teach us about faith and how to live our lives. Jesus' resurrection was proof, proof for us, too, that if we believe in Jesus and recognize him as a son of God, we, too, can live with him in heaven after we die. What an amazing, incredible gift. So remember, children, Easter is when Jesus opened up the gates of heaven for all who believe in him. God bless you. Our anthem this morning is My Lord, What a Morning. And this was done once again by the CUMC Virtual Choir. Uh, thank you to John and Russ, and special thanks to our out of state uh, participants, which, which are Donna Hoffmeister and uh, Richard Spryer from uh, Colorado and Wisconsin. And most of all, I'd like to thank GE for this. She worked so hard and she recorded everybody's part to teach it to us. And it's just amazing that we can put this all together like this. feel uplifted after seeing that. What beautiful music and glorious slides showing the glory of, of God's creation. Thank you, Maureen. It's now time to pass the peace, and we certainly need a lot of peace. This has been a, a rough week for the nation with all the news of the shootings and things that keep happening that are so terrible. We want to pass the peace to each other. We have to do it virtually, as we all know. And when we pass the peace, we say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And let's pass a massive virtual hug out to all of our loved ones. Peace be with you, everybody. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, the song book in the Bible chapter 99, verses 1 through 9. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. 
Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statues and degree, decrees he gave them. Lord, our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God in worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Praise be to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next song is, or hymn, is What, Do what Does the Lord Require? Please join us. <laughs> Easter people. As Vince said in the children's sermon, Jesus did appear to many people and we believe in resurrection. But what does that mean? Some people believe in resurrection, but they don't know the meaning of it. For example, some people know that Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln was killed and shot. However, what does that mean? That means to some people, a work for the fight against the racism to free all the slaves and equality of people. So when we believe in resurrection, that's one thing, but the meaning of it is another. So we will focus on the meaning of it and what we need to do after resurrection. The Psalm says, the Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. We are the Easter people, and Jesus has won the victory over the power of sin and death once for all. The meaning of it is that even though we are still fighting against many evils in the world, we shall overcome. The Psalm 99 declared that the Lord is king. All peoples in the world tremble before God's justice and righteousness. Now we know that God is the king. 
God can conquer the power of sin and death. We have to work courageously without fear, trembling with hope. And the psalm says, God is holy. When you say that God is holy, God is more than fair. Justice gives everybody what he or she deserves. Holiness allows everybody what he or she does not own. For example, you remember the story of two mothers who are fighting over one baby, same baby. One of the women was the real mother. One of the women was not the real mother. They went to Solomon, the King Solomon, and they both claimed that this is her baby. And King Solomon says, that, cut the baby in half and give half to each mother. And the real mother said, no, 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 no. I don't want my baby to be cut. Just to give my baby to her. And Solomon knew right there at that moment that that's the real mother. And this story is usually recited to show the wisdom of Solomon. However, this is also show what holiness means. Holy people can give up their right to save other people. Jesus gave up his divinity to save all our sinners. Holiness allows everybody what he or she does not own. Justice means I get mine, you got yours. It's fair. According to justice, we are all condemned to death because we are sinners. But God's grace, holy God forgives us by God's grace. And the psalm continuously declares, he sits enthroned upon the cherubim, angels. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted of all the peoples. Not only one people, Israel, but all the peoples on earth. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. God is holy. And so we are. We need to be holy. We cannot just stick to our rights and we cannot just claim our rights as our own. We need to give up because God is holy. With such holiness, we walk to winter night walk. We walk not to earn wages. We walk to help homeless families. We work to earn bread for our families, but we walk to care for the homeless families. Those homeless families are not lazy people who do not want to work. They also have jobs and working people. One of the volunteers at the winter night confessed to me that when she came to serve the homeless people, she thought before that, before she came there, she thought that the homeless people do not have a job. But in the morning, they all went to work. <laughs> they got the lunch bag and they went to work. Simply their income is not good enough to pay for rent or mortgages. That's why they become homeless. They are hard work, work, working people. Let me show you the like, mathematics of the homeless people. So in California, minimum wage is $15 an hour. If they work 40 hours, they earn $600 a week. One month has four weeks. That means that they have $2,400 a month. However, the rent is like for two bedroom, $3,000 a month. How can you pay the rent and still buy groceries and pay utility bills and send, them, send the children to school? Even though two couples are working hard, it is really hard to meet their ends. That's how they become homeless people sometimes. Everybody in California, if they don't have two month income, they can become homeless. And God is, God does not like that. God is a lover of justice. The Psalm 99 declares saying, Mighty King, a lover of justice. You have established equity. 
You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. We believe that every human should have basic necessities like food, clothes, and shelter. And we are the richest country in the world. And still, some cannot afford a house. Even all the family members work. This is not justice. Then how can we face these challenges together? As Easter people, we need to work together to face this homeless issue. It is a political issue, but it is also a faith issue. As Christians, how should we share our shelters? Some of us live alone in a big house, paying all the maintenance expenses, like they have to pay for the gardener and maid and housekeepers. That is why we started a discussion among us how to repurpose our church buildings. Can we share our church property with those who need the housing? Is it possible for us to build affordable housing on campus and share it with those homeless people? We have done winter night uh, ministry many, many years, as Michelle said. As Easter people, we need to proclaim God's power and life in the world. And people ask us, Jesus is resurrected, so what? And we say, well, so we are going to help you. We do not suggest the policies and projects because we honor the principle of separation of church and state. But we need to guide the direction of our society as spiritual leaders. We are spiritual leaders. God is holy and so are we. The Psalm 99 proudly proclaims, saying, It's told the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he, and you are holy. God says, you are holy, and we are all holy. That's what it means to be an Easter people. As holy people, we keep God's decrees and statutes. The religious leaders are also mentioned here as God's messengers, Moses and Aaron, who were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillars of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. The call of the religious leaders is to proclaim God's will and make sure that it is done here on earth. So you and I, we are all spiritual leaders and we can proclaim the will of God. This morning, our Bishop uh, Minerva Calcano wrote an opinion in the LA Times and she asked our government to stand up and step up to help those children at the borders and help those immigrant people. Like Moses and Aaron, she prayed to God for God's grace. God forgave the Israelites when the leaders prayed for them. They also proclaimed God's will and spoke God's decrees and statutes that God gave them. Christian leaders should speak about the principles of laws and policies based on God's will. We need to live together peacefully and love one another. We have to care for each other. We cannot just say, am I a keeper of my brother? You remember what Cain said after he killed his brother Abel? God was looking for Abel and said, Cain, where is your brother? And he said, Am I a keeper of my brother? But actually, the truth was that Cain killed Abel. And God just asked him, where is your brother? Do not say, am I a keeper of my brother or sister? God demand our answer. So brothers and sisters, as Easter people, we experience God's grace. Now we know that we have eternal life after death. And death cannot threaten us anymore. Death lost its sting. And the Psalm 99, however, warns us, saying, 
followed our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. God is the avenger also. You know, we pray to God. And God answered to our prayer. When we ignore the cries of our neighbors, God answered to our neighbor's prayer. The same God who answers to our prayers will answer to the prayers of the needy. God is fair. So God is going to listen to their prayers. In Exodus, the Bible says that God saw the misery of the slaves. God listened to their cries and God decided to act. That's why God sent Moses to Pharaoh and help him to say, free my people, let my people go. So we have to ask how to extol the Lord our God in our concrete action and in our daily lives. And you know, the Psalm 99 finally invite us saying, extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain for the Lord our God is holy. And we will plant a seed and God will make it grow. Even though we cannot transform the whole world at the time, one day, we can plant a seed and God will make it grow. And later, people around us will enjoy the fruit of our action and our words. That's why we had this winter night walk. We believe that God will grow it. We have worked to support homeless families more than 15 years. However, now we want to provide more permanent housing for them. We want to build a village where uh, multi-generation live together in affordable housing. So some of us gather together and dream these uh, dreams and have visions for our future community. So around our church campus, if we have like uh, some affordable senior housings and daycare centers, and we can worship together, and we can care for each other, and we can raise children together. Raising children takes whole village. So eventually we want to have some kind of a Concord UFC village. And today we walk. That's like planting a seed. Tomorrow we may build up community. And in that way, God will make it grow so that we can provide permanent housing for the homeless people, not just the two weeks or one month shelter in our church campus. I don't know how it will turn out, but as a, an Easter people, we will just dream dreams and we'll walk the walk, not just a talk the talk, and then God will bear fruits for us. And would you pray with us for that. Can I get some amen? I can hear amen. <laughs> Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for the dreams that you planted in our heart and the vision that we can see together. While we were walking, we laughed and we talked and we prayed and we sang. While we walked, the winter night walk, we shared our dreams and visions. Lord, today we serve only a couple families. Tomorrow we want to serve all your families. Today we provide only temporary housings. Tomorrow we want to provide permanent housings for all people. All your people need Beijing necessities like food, shelter, and clothes. Some people have so many things and they do not know what to do with them. Lord, give us the Holy Spirit to share what we have, our time and talent and treasure with our neighbors who are in need and help us to shine your glory through our action. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.
We've talked this morning about one of our most recent ministries, the Winter Nights program, and we have a variety of missions and ministries that the church supports locally, nationally, and internationally. We'd love you to help support those by mailing a check to Concord UMC, 1645 West Street in Concord, or if you prefer to go online to concordumc.org and just click on the online giving button for direct links, or if you'd like to set up an online bill pay through your bank, banks know how to do that. So we appreciate your support and God bless you. forth the prayers of the people. It is with uh, great sadness that um, I read this prayer request for uh, Sister Q. I call her Pastor Q, uh, but you know her as Quintisha Davis Wiley. She is the pastor at Pittsburgh UMC, and she became a candidate for ordained ministry through CUMC's church conference. And she also was our youth uh, leader for many years, uh, many years ago when, when I know Milton was young. Well, she lost her 27-year-old son on Saturday, April 10th. And so please pray for her and her family. She had lost her nephew on Thursday, April 8th, and the son was coming home to attend the funeral. And he was robbed and killed at a hotel where he stayed for one night. And she is the mother to both of those individuals because um, she raised her, her uh, nephew and, um, and niece uh, as a mom uh, in her life. So let's please lift her up and the family and her children and everyone around them. This is a tremendous loss. And as Vince said earlier, and it's violence, violence, again, rearing its ugly head. And from Sandy, Prayers for Catherine Hensley, who has been in a great deal of pain from her legs and is un unable to get out. She is a regular viewer of this service and she needs our support. So please pray for Catherine Hensley. Prayers for healing for Edie Rucker's brother, Dick, who just had surgery for kidney stones and hopefully it was successful and he will be on the road to good health. And for our organist, Ji Yi, uh, she's been suffering from sciatica for a few days now. Um, she's made an appointment to go to her doctor, but let's pray for fast healing there. Um, and we just, again, lift up anyone that has lost anybody to violence. Um, I think we need to really pray and focus on that B word to eradicate it from our communities, from our hearts, and from everywhere. Let us pray together. Lord, we pray with a heavy heart. After we had a joyful walk to support our mission and ministries, we heard the tragic news of violence and killing. During the last week, we heard 35 massive shooting in our country. When it was on the news, we pray for our country However, when it become personal, we had ache in our heart. Your daughter, Kantisha, your servant, lost her son. She want us to pray for the peace of the country because evil spirit is working behind all the violence. She wants to pray for the peace, spirit of peace prevails over the spirit of violence. 
So Lord, hear our prayers. So many people are dying because of gun violence and other kinds of violence. Lord, we also pray for Kathleen Hensley, our faithful church member who are suffering from pain. And we pray for G, our organist, who are suffering from the pain from sciatica. And Lord, we pray for E.D. Rocker's brother, Dick, who is also recovering from the surgery. You are the healer, and we pray for you. And we pray for our brother, Eric Ferguson, and his mom, Betty. He is in crisis and danger. Lord, send your angels and protect them from all kinds of threats and crisis, and help them to come back on foot to stand again and walk the walk of faith. Lord, we have so many brothers and sisters whose names are not mentioned here, but we pray for all of us to stay together, help each other, and walk together because the journey is long and our foot is tired. And we haven't seen much help except for your grace. So Lord, we believe in risen Lord who walks with us. And now it's just the beginning of the faith journey. Help us to finish our race with faith, patience, hope, and love. We all pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in our last hymn, He is Exalted. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who conquered the power of sin and death, and the love of our God, who saves us with his unconditional love, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit, who walked with us the walk of faith, be with us ever and forever. Amen.